Well, doctors say they can now look at a woman's ovaries and know how many eggs are left. That's right. In tonight's Medical Watch, predicting fertility and planning accordingly. New technology is making it possible. WGN Medical reporter Dina Bayer has the latest on how it all works. Dina. It answers one basic question, and that is essentially how old are your ovaries? From the time a female is born, she has a specific number of eggs. That number diminishes over time at different times for different women. Now, no matter what a woman's biological age, doctors can pinpoint her reproductive age and predict when she's likely to go through menopause. Tears are a common sight for women in fertility clinics. Emotions run high as hormone-stimulating medications course in high levels through the body. For the Cannons, the tears represent the fear of the unknown. Oh, it's terrible. Uh, it's a, it's a lot puts a burden on your relationship just to not know. Heather and Hunter Cannon didn't know why they couldn't conceive after trying for two and a half years. We just needed the information so we could hopefully find out if there was something wrong or you know what we needed to do, how aggressive we needed to proceed. Did they need artificial insemination, in vitro fertilization, or adoption to turn their dream of having a child into a reality? Dr. Randy Morris told them the ovarian function test would yield the answer. It appears that my ovaries are a little bit smaller than they should be for a 35-year-old. Smaller ovaries mean fewer eggs for possible conception. This process is going to, of, of egg depletion is going to continue throughout her life. Now, it's not going to continue at the same rate in all women. A typical 20-year-old has about 160,000 eggs. That number goes down about 5,000 per year. So at 25, a woman has 135,000 eggs, 110,000 by 30. By age 35, women have 85,000 eggs. The size of the ovary continues to shrink with decreasing egg numbers as a woman approaches menopause, going down to 60,000 eggs at age 40, just 35,000 at 45, and dwindling to only 5,000 eggs at age 50. By looking at uh, the ovarian volumes of women of various ages and sticking those volumes into various formulas, a recent study determined that you can actually predict when a woman should go through menopause. So how do doctors know how many eggs are left? By measuring the volume of the ovary, comparing that size to a large group of women, you can determine is this ovary smaller, the same, or larger than it would be for somebody of that particular age. Ovarian age predicts fertility potential. Three tests, one with three measurements, reveal the answer. A length, a height, and a width. And then using a formula, we're going to compute the volume of the ovary. The calculations are performed using an ultrasound image. Looking at that same picture, doctors then count follicles, the stalk-shaped structures that hold eggs. Typically at the beginning of a cycle, you should be able to see five, ten of those in each ovary. We're going to look at that and we're going to count the number in each ovary and see if she in fact has a reduced number. And finally, a blood test reveals follicle stimulating hormone or FSH levels. We know that women with decreased ovarian reserve have or can have high FSH levels. Your FSH levels from your Cloma Challenge test both came back low. That's what we wanted to see. Cindy Kritz is pleasantly surprised. At age 37, her ovaries appear younger. On one of your ovaries, we had a, a volume of about 7.6 and the other one was about 9. On that, we come down here and we see a reproductive age that's actually in the early 30s. The bigger ovaries give her a greater chance at fertility and a higher hope for success. It's like, okay, those things are fine. Why am I not getting pregnant? And that's why I'm here and, and that's why I'm going to continue to pursue it uh, because I know it's, it's, it's going to happen. Smoking, previous diseases like cancer and cancer treatment, as well as blood flow problems, can all negatively impact ovarian function. But even when the test results are not the best, as in Heather's case, women can still get pregnant. She had low volume, but with fertility aid, is now happily expecting. Oh, the test costs between about two to three hundred dollars, and Dr. Morris says in some cases insurance will pick it up. Mm, that's worth well, it. Very nice. That peace of mind, Dina. Thank you. Oh, just when.